EMS, we copy that, right? Yeah. I mean, how you say you just, you woke up shot? It is a medical anomaly. Initially, he appears to be fine. It doesn't even look like he's shot. He's got one in the chest. He's got one in the chest right here. All right, baby, let's go this way. I lift up his shirt, and I can see that he has a bullet wound to the chest. Sit right here for me, OK? Oh, Lord, I hope I don't die, man. You're not, not going to die, baby. We're going to take care of you. We, of course, immediately just get him in the back of the truck so we can see if he has anything more. It's right, right here. But where? that's where it starts. It's swollen right there. Did you fall? No, I was in the bed sleep. OK. <laughs> and you just woke up with this, huh? Yeah, I heard. I don't know how they got There's in my something right there. While assessing him, Nick feels the back of his head, and he can feel a little skull deformity. Is there anything on that side? Like any entrance one? All right, baby, sit hey, back. Wait a minute. It looks like he's crying tears, literally. I can't figure out what until I look at it really close. Oh, my God. That's, right That's there. it. What happened? I got shot in the face? Yeah, yeah, baby. He's actually got a hole in his eye socket from a bullet. I you got feel. right here, and you got one right here in the crease of your eye. It looks like it went into your nasal cavity, and it may have actually ended up back here. Because Can you see out of this eye? Okay. Were you able to see out of this eye before? No. Because he happened to be blind in the eye that he was shot, he had no idea that he was actually hit in the face. Is it stuff? Got blood in his mouth. Yeah. I mean, the chest wound alone, he was definitely going to be a trauma activation. But when you have someone shot to the face, he could have swelling of the brain, bleeding on the brain. I mean, the possibilities are endless. So we are going to get him to the hospital as quickly as possible. The luckiest dude you're going to meet. Dude, did it go straight through or did Entrance, it go? Entrance, and I couldn't tell. Obviously, you can't tell from an x-ray. You're going to need a, a cat. Right. But you can see the bullet. In the like, back. Yeah. So and one. you got the one in the chest. Right. Yeah. And it luckily, it didn't hit his heart. Right. Yeah, so. Or a lung. The luckiest dude, period. Ooh. Once he comes out, we go into the boat. We go on gambling. Cause... That's what y'all do? Yeah. Y'all decided hey, that? I'm going to I'm gonna find him, Dang. and I'm going to put some, uh, put all some money on whatever he says, red or black, whatever right. he wants. <laughs> you <laughs> so, want lucky, lucky dude. Yeah. Dan and I, we work the night watch, so we don't get to see too many kids throughout our uh, chef. What's that? It's a computer. Oxygen. Wow. Two on it. A lot of buttons, huh? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, just like you press your mama's buttons. Look. Look. Is that real? Yeah, you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> the brother is just wearing me out. I mean, what's that like here, too? That's gloves. There you go. Look at that. I feel like a babysitter on their first night. You see how silly he is? <laughs> Everything he saw, he wanted to know what it was. What's that? That's my radio charger. In case somebody wants to call me with this one. Hello? Hello? Uh-oh. Now you're going to get somebody to talk to you. Dan and them must have a kid. Four, 20, I'm code four, sir. Hey, no seat. How about we turn it off this time so you don't get me in trouble? What's hilarious about that is that's our emergency button. We hit that button to, like, call attention. Now, how did... <laughs> And now I'm ready for a nap. 32, 32, you're gonna be responding for me and down. Doesn't give an age or anything. Could be the diabeticals, could be the Narcans, could be just woke up dead. How do you wake up dead? You wake up and you don't really wake up. Nick, you can't wake up dead. No. <laughs> You cannot wake up dead, no. It's just something that you say. No. Yes. If you say that, you're ignoramus. People you that don't say wake ignoramus up. are ignorant. No. That's all you're I'm saying. Ignoramus. I got your ignoramus. Shenanigans. Rebuckets. Sha na 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 na. Rebuckets. Sha la la. 3232, we're on scene. That's the fire department. We get a call for a gentleman 
that's supposedly down in his hotel room. A second party caller, which essentially is somebody that's not there, called 911 for this gentleman. 3232. We have an okay. opinion scene already. Just give us an access to it. He's got the deadbolt locked. All right, they had the deadbolt locked on the room, so it looks like they're gonna have to break the door down. Fire's gonna have to. Knowing that someone is inside of the hotel room and they're not answering you, Sir. it could be a seizure, stroke, death, overdose, suicide. Sir. We have to assume the worst. The fire call. I need a Hey, buddy. How you doing? Taking your phones out? No. Do you sleep like the dead? They thought something was wrong with you. Oh, she no. wasn't answering the door. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I had headphones in. You OK? Yeah, I'm fine. OK. All right. All right, buddy. Well, they might have to move your hotel room, because we yeah. had to break in here, all right? Yeah. <laughs> have a good one, brother. You too. 3232, he was sleeping with his headphones in, and he's just fine. <laughs> they just broke that door down. Right. And dude's in bed listening to his iPad. I don't think he really asked too many questions because he probably knew who called and why. Girlfriend's talking to him from wherever the hell he's from, and then he goes to sleep, puts the earphones in. Right. And she calls 911 like an over-concerned right. girlfriend would do. My boyfriend's in New Orleans. You call it. You know, call it. Call 911. Keep everything. We're going to take care of you, Florida, right? We're dispatched to a possible seizure. We have the patient in the back of the truck. We got the IV secure. We got him on the monitor. We have him on the O2. Everything is going to plan. Oh. Well, I can jump in your ambulance and drive it away. Come on, baby, do oh. oh. Someone's on the front seat of the truck. Hey, truck. Hey, got a drunk just jumped in the truck. Get out of the truck, man. Hey, get the out of the you. truck. Of course, we're going to have a few words with him, but our main concern is the patient in the back of the truck. Hey, look, 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 look here. We got you. He just got out and ran up the street. Lord, everything is fine. You do have the correct driver up front driving us to the hospital. This guy's in the back, and he, and he is talking to me, so that's a good thing. Kevin, when the last time you had a seizure? About four months ago. About four months ago? Do you take do you take medications for it? Yeah. All right, that's fine. I got fun. Floyd, I'm with you. I'm with you. I can just tell that something is going on, but I don't think it's a grandma seizure. So I'm not going to do anything to stop a seizure. My main concern is keeping him safe and getting him to the hospital. How do you feel right now? Please. Please. What the hell was that? Dude, that never happened to me before. I've never had a truck stop. I, I remember years ago, I remember somebody stole one off two lanes around. They took it for like a little joy ride around the city, crashing right. thing. Dude, let me tell you how, how crazy this was, because I'm in the back, and right. when I see it moving, I'm like, why is Dan moving the truck? Then I look, you actually standing in front of me. And like, we both looked at each other like, wait a minute, he's back here with me. me right. Like, we both had that thought. I supermaned out the side of the Man, truck. Man, I don't know. Have you seen a look on your face? <laughs> you know what I mean? 32, 32. A male struck while riding his motorcycle. It's usually pretty bad. But once I step out of the truck, I actually don't see any visible signs of trauma. And then I notice that he's got a cell phone in his hand. Yeah, there's nothing obvious. Obviously, uh, he's on his phone. Anytime you can have your cell phone in your hand and you're calling people, that lets me know you are right. You ain't dead and you ain't dying. Uh, hold on! Hey, my man. What's up? How you doing? I've Martin. seen better days. I <laughs> I, I was sitting at the light and the light just turned red. And I pulled out my phone to play Pokemon Go. I was trying to see what was in the area. We've had a significant rise in Pokemon-related injuries. Something just told me to look up. I see these headlights coming towards me. And before I know it, I was slipping through them. All right, the most important question that we're going to ask you tonight, don't lie. Be as honest as possible. Did you get any rare Pokemon? <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to look at that. <laughs> Get out. Everyone knows how much I hate this game. It doesn't matter if you're on a bike or walking or whatever, and there's cars zooming by, you should not be playing Pokemon Go. What's going on, man? Back. I can't look through the guy's window. He almost hit my chest. Bleeding controlled under that towel? 
It looks like it's slowed down. All right, okay. Even though there was a lot of blood, I'm glad to see he wasn't actually impaled with glass. All right, do me a favor. We're going to put the towel back around him. We're going to get you to the truck, OK? Feel like you can walk? Yep. Just get you ready? Yeah. OK, all right. For this gentleman, just want to take care of that arm, clean it up some. Where are you from? California. OK, welcome to New Orleans, man. <laughs> yeah. Bring him on up to the hospital. Get some x-rays done. Just make sure there's not damage that we can't see. 6240, you can cancel fire. All right, keep his hand up. Turn around. Turn around. I know it's all right, a tiny Sit straight face. back. Sit straight back. All right, bud. All right, kick your legs up for me. Where's your family? Uh, my wife took the kids back to the hotel room. Okay. My daughter was hysterical. All right, you got this? My parents yeah. are out yeah. on the curb. The guy almost took one of my kids out. Oh. Come to find out, the man is walking across the street with his two young kids, and a car comes and does not stop all the way at the stop sign, and he has to pull his kids back, or else they could have been hit by the car. And as he's pulling the kids back, the car kept on going, and he swung and punched out the car window. All right, where is the car? Not that it's in his palm. It's like right here. Oh, he's got another one to the side of the pinky oh, yeah. finger. Is that glass still in there right there? Yeah, it looks like it. You're going to be OK, man. All right. going to be fine. Get you some stitches in there. It's time to get him up to the hospital. What brought you out of New Orleans? Well, family vacation. Well, I'm glad we're here for you and not for your daughter. He is absolutely a hero, Dad. You don't need an ambulance for the guy. Oh, I, I, yeah. He saved his daughter from a fate that could have been terrible. 32, 32, two lane. And if he has some cuts and scrapes to show for that, I think that's a win for everybody. We're looking for a male that has a laceration to his head. No. that he somehow obtained from a wire. I'm calling. Dude was rocking out on his guitar. <laughs> and boom, string pop. That's what I'm going with. I want you to think about guitars injuring people. Uh -uh. I was playing my guitar. No, no. And I was going really far. No, no. All of a sudden, the string broke. No, no. And it poked. Me in, the head. in the nose. You should have said, punch <laughs> me in the nose. In the nose. You almost had it. <laughs> Thank y'all for coming. No problem. How you feel? So, you all right? You want to go to the hospital? Real G, you feel me? Yeah. I feel you. You want to go to the hospital? You can do whatever you think. You're the expert. It's up to how you feel, man. How you feel? How about we take your vital signs, clean you up, and check everything out in the truck? How's that sound? That sound good? All right. What actually happened was that this kid was clotheslined by a wire that was part of a setup for a graduation. Hop back here. At first glance, it appears to be very minor. We still want to take him in the truck, check him out, assess him further, just to make sure we're not missing anything. I'm not going to look at myself, because that would be a rookie mistake. All you need is some Neosporin. That's not even bad at all. Let me see this. I got a knot on the left. Just a little bit, a little one. This is my mom used to make me go in the house for. Street lights. That's right. Come on, you got to come in the house. You could hit cords. <laughs> You want a Band-Aid on your nose? No, I'm a G. All right. <laughs> but if you think. I mean, I can put one on there if you just want to, you know, no. enhance the story. Right. Maybe I can get one of my girls to rub my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Send it when you're ready. How many girls you got? None. Why would you say that? <laughs> what you do is you use this to get the girl. But you right. got to have a better story than that. You need to say something like, man, I was, you know, rocking out on my drum set, and then the next thing you know, uh, Falcon came out of nowhere and just, you know, hit me in the face. Calls like this, where you can laugh with your patient, it's refreshing. It kind of, you know, balances out those times when you can't even speak to your patient because you're too busy, you know, trying to keep them alive. Shortness of breath. It says history as. When we arrived, the fire department was there giving the baby oxygen. How you doing, baby? How the baby doing? He's definitely having trouble breathing, so we have to get him into the truck quick to get a nebulizer on him. We can give you a little something to breathe in. The nebulizer will help open his lungs and ultimately help him breathe better. Y'all got that new spot. This one on. Where the mama at? I want you to come sit right here, baby. All right, little one. Don't jump. Don't run off. Oh, I can hear him from here. You got a little yeah, junk up in there. junk. All right, I know. It's going to be all right, man. I know, huh? You think you want to hold that? Huh? 
So we're just assessing for any type of distress. Obviously, the kid's breathing really fast and is, is grunting and having trouble getting air in. I don't want you to chew on it. What's his name? I want you to breathe on it. John. Has he been diagnosed with that? Okay. This child is newly diagnosed with a case of asthma. You know what's funny though? Like once we start moving the ambulance, it put those kids right out. We're gonna be sleeping all the way to uh we can go. I'm good. Uh, it's okay. Treating an infant, it can sometimes be nerve-wracking. The kid's sick and he needs medication, and you can be easily distracted with crying, but, you know, you want to stay focused and get the kid breathing better. Watching a child that was screaming a minute ago fall asleep because of the care you've given... Got me, little one. ...is, is pretty awesome. It doesn't get any better than that. It's chilly. What a little man doing? He said that drive was so smooth, he fell he asleep. asleep. Dude, they always fall asleep. You said that before we got before we left. Always. Like, that's, that, that's that little magic touch I got. <laughs> yes. Do that kid, dude. I can see my kid looking like that little plump type baby, man. I can just see that. You think that. that's because in your situation, the father, is a plump kid as well. <laughs> what, what makes you think your kid's gonna look like that? I don't know. All the kids in the T Row fan come out a little plump. Then our muscles start to uh, oh, start develop. Right, right. See all this? How you know how much you weighed when you were born? Probably like 17, 8. See back in them days, man. Mama had to walk up two hills, catch four buses to charity. It was back at work that afternoon, huh? Hey, I'm talking about back at work that same afternoon, you know what I mean? And snow. They don't even snow in the walls. Just, just that day. It's just so having to snow that year and that day. Be careful, Theo. Earlier tonight, we had a drunk driver roll her vehicle into the bayou, and initially we were told that she was the only person in the vehicle at that time. <laughs> Several hours later, we received information that the driver may have, in fact, had a passenger riding with her that didn't make it out. It's pretty creepy. It's, it's kind of scary because you don't know what you're going to grab or what's going to grab you. <laughs> you hope nothing grabs you. Billy. It's pitch black. I can't see my hand in front of my face. I'm feeling around, and I feel clothing. And I don't know if there's anything else attached to that. I grab a hold of it so I can get it out of the vehicle. I got a right, you. Thankfully, there wasn't anything attached to it. I felt all the way across the back part. I, gotta... I didn't feel anybody. I couldn't I feel anybody up here. There's some clues. 140, that's going to be a negative on a person on the side of this vehicle. Not that I could find, anyway. In my opinion, it's not that big of a risk for us to do that, because it's just something that we do. Well, now I do have to go home and change. Yeah, OK, sure. I felt a lot better knowing that we did absolutely everything we could to see if there was anyone left in that vehicle, whether they be dead or alive. And you got a victim? I'm looking at all these houses to see if he crawled somewhere or something. We get a call for a 34S, and we're looking for one victim. Somebody's shooting at us. All of a sudden, gunfire erupts. We jump in our vehicles and re-roll out. All operations go to 
Make sure you let uh, FD know to get shots fired in the area not to go on scene. What channel PD's on? Channel 4. I see the police racing towards the gunfire to try and secure the scene, putting themselves in harm's way to keep us safe. It's hard not to admire their courage. In 16 years, I've never had that happen. It uh, makes you realize how vulnerable you really are. All right, they're giving a code four right now. Once more police got on scene and secured it, we rolled in. There's somebody in here? Patient contact. And actually found a male victim that had been shot. Sir, are you injured? I just got hit in the ear. You got hit in the ear? You got shrapnel in your head. What is that? That piece is a bullet. Piece is a bullet in your head here, in your neck here, in your ear. He was definitely very angry and upset, understandable, considering the situation. Want to get on a stretcher, baby? Yeah, 3232 is going to be transport. You can clear the second year. We are going to take him to the trauma center just in case something has gone deeper into his neck. We see life change in a matter of seconds every day, but you don't ever think that it could be your life changing within seconds. It just kind of brings you back to reality of how dangerous our job really is. Definitely get the hair on the back of your neck standing up when you get out of your unit and you hear gunfire. It was close. <laughs> it was way too close for comfort. Be safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're going to bleed to death. Ransom <sighs> the They're not dead. I can work with that.